Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for letting me borrow the car in this video. Toyota of Naperville is one of the largest Toyota dealers in Illinois, ready to find the right car for you. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander XLE. Up front is a 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four and down below is an eight speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Grand Highlander for two reasons. First of all, it's a new model from Toyota. This is the very first model year of the Grand Highlander. It was actually unveiled back in February, but that's my my second talking point is that I was actually at, in person, the grand unveiling of the Grand Highlander. I witnessed it first person. So this is the first vehicle that I was privately invited by Toyota to come to the launch and now am driving, which is such a cool full circle moment. But if you'd like to share your vehicle with me, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out, and I come out to you, and you would get a video of your car, just like the one you're watching now of this Grand Highlander. But let's get back to that 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four. Now, I don't have horsepower numbers directly in front of me at the moment. However, I will put them up on screen if that's something that you would like. This is the four cylinder turbo, and you might be thinking, Zach, that's a big vehicle for a low four cylinder. And honestly, it's not. Is it the fastest thing on God's green earth? Am I tearing the doors off the competition? No, but it gets out of its own way. It moves. And honestly, in a vehicle like this, it's all I can ask for. The outgoing Mazda CX-9 was a four cylinder turbo. The Subaru Ascent is a four cylinder turbo. Compared to those vehicles, it's right on brand. Like I said, paired to it is an eight speed automatic transmission. It is not a CVT, it is not anything like that. And that helps get its 5,000 pound towing capacity. And I really like that it's just a traditional transmission. Last but not least, this particular Grand Highlander is all wheel drive. However, you can find them in front wheel drive if that's either something you prefer or if you get a lower trim level. So how's it feel to drive the Grand Highlander. Well, it drives just like the Highlander. Now, of course, you get more space and it is physically larger. The actual driving experience is nice. It's not a body on frame vehicle, which tends to mean that it's not a very harsh ride. Body on frame trucks are normally sprung pretty heavily. This is, this is nice and light and very enjoyable to cruise around. Steering is light, throttle is easy. I feel like anyone with any amount of experience would be able to drive this, just keeping that size in mind. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a nearly completely digital gauge cluster. So I do get my coolant temperature and fuel off to the left and right, but in the center, it's all digital. I just got done driving the brand new Prius for a week, and so a lot of that carries over to this vehicle. I really like it and I think it looks pretty good, so no complaints. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my selectors for that screen as well as my volume, voice command, and phone options. And off to the right, I have my adaptive cruise control and my skip track button. I do really like the overall feel of the steering wheel. Feels decently modern, which is what I would expect out of a brand new model. Off to the left, I do have my climate control vent, odometer, and gauge dimmer switches, my automatic high beams, and my rear tailgate button. And then moving on to the door, we just have power mirrors, power locks, and power windows. Moving into the center, we do have our infotainment system. This is the same shared system you'll find across all of Toyota's newer vehicles, the Prius, the Sequoia, vehicles like that. I don't get anything too interesting or crazy, although I do get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And here is the backup camera in case you were curious. Then we have a lot of physical buttons, which I am a big, big fan of. Off to the left, these are our climate controls, so I do get heated seats, I get dual zone climate, and these knobs just feel like they're gonna go the distance. They feel well engineered, they have a good weight to them, they feel high quality, and that's what I really look for. I also do have windshield wiper de-icers, and I have a button for my rear climate. Then I do get two climate control vents and the hazard switch. And moving down in the center, we have two USB-C's, but one of them mimics the start button off to the left. I assume this is for right-hand drive markets, but it's kind of funny. They didn't know what to do to fill this little void. So they just put a little USB-C in there and you know, it works. 
doesn't not work. Then we do get a wireless charger in the center console. And off to the left, we have our shifter, pretty standard shifter from Toyota. A very similar one is shared like in the Tacoma and vehicles like that. And then we have our power parking brake and brake hold. Again, nice features to have. And then off to the right, we do have cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Grand Highlander. And here's the thing, the actual cup holders don't pass but there is this giant container right in front of it that does pass but it's not a dedicated cup holder if i were just to test any flimsy space that could carry the bottle most if not all cars would pass because most cars have trunks so unfortunately the grand highlander fails the big friggin bottle test hold on hold on hold on stop the presses I was actually looking back through the launch footage for the Grand Highlander event in Chicago, and they did have press photos of a water bottle in that position. And so since they showed that photo, I'm going to go back and give the Grand Highlander a pass because Toyota did in fact intend big water bottles to fit in that upper cup holder. <laughs> Then we come up a step and we have a lot more buttons. So we have the automatic start stop on and off, the traction control on and off, and then we have all of our drive modes. So we do have normal, eco, sport, mud and sand, and rock and dirt. This is the all wheel drive, so it gets those mode selects, which is very nice to see. And then off to the right, we have an additional snow mode and hill descent control. Moving into the center console, we do get a 12 volt outlet. And what's interesting is you just get this little trap door. You can't actually open the sides of it, which is kind of weird and annoying, but oh well. Then we got to move up to the seats. The seats are decently comfortable. They're not blowing me away, but for a vehicle in this segment, something that a family might own, something that is going to be used more as an appliance and not a fashion statement, these seats are comfortable enough. They do the job and I don't have any worries. However, speaking of seats, the Grand Highlander's claim to fame is its third row. So let's hop back there and do a backseat review. All right, getting in the back of the Grand Highlander, somewhere I've actually sat before, but in a weird wedding venue in Chicago. Anyway, now that we're in the back of the Grand Highlander, a couple of things to note. First of all, I do have my own climate controls back here. I get two USB-C chargers and a 12 volt outlet. I do get a center console. I get vents in the ceiling, which are very nicely blowing on me, but I don't want it to mess up my audio. <laughs> A little bit of a barbecue smell. Hmm. Interesting. I think it's because there's a barbecue place down the street. Anyway, the second row is fantastic. Sitting here, knees fully extended, head fully extended, if that's a thing. I'm not hitting anything. I'm very, very comfortable back here. And that was Toyota's goal. This is a very roomy third row SUV or three row SUV. But let's see how the third row actually works. So. Let's hop out and I'm just gonna start pulling levers. All right, oh, okay, that scoots it forward and gives me a little opening. There's a little step here. I can't move it back any further, but even if it was moved all the way back, I actually still have space back here. I have these USB-C outlets on either side as well. I get my own cup holders back here. This is really, really impressive. This is a very nice three row. And Toyota at the launch event wanted to emphasize that. They said, we didn't just throw a third row in we wanted to make sure that adults could sit back here. And they really did achieve that. I, I will say, I have to give Toyota credit, although this does feel like sort of a warmed over, just extended version of a Highlander, which it is. Feels a little phoned in, but the back third row definitely does not. And that is really, really nice to see. Now let's hop out and see how much cargo space we've jeopardized by adding a third row. All right, we're on the back of the Grand Highlander. Press and hold here on the key fob, and we do have a power tailgate. Really, really nice stuff here, especially at this price point, I will say. Anyway, once we are back here, we get this Grand Highlander floor mat. Can pop this up and, well, not really much space to add down there. We do have a privacy cover that we could put up that is not currently up. Other than that, I'm not seeing any 12 volt outlets. I would have liked to have seen that, but not the end of the world. But with the seats up, you still get a decent amount of cargo space. I'm genuinely impressed with the rear packaging here of the Grand Highlander. Come up here, one press of the button, and we are down 
like that. Now we gotta talk about the looks and I could take or leave the exterior of this. I mean, it really just looks like a bigger Highlander. Although the new Lexus TX is going to share this platform, which is kind of interesting. And that I assume will look a little bit better, but I, I, I could take or leave the exterior of this. It's neither here nor there. It's just kind of existing, which is fine, I guess. But with all of that being said, Let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving, finally, after witnessing the reveal of the Toyota Grand Highlander? Well, first of all, I have to say that the event of seeing it unveiled was pretty cool. And from what the Toyota reps told me at that event, they wanted to offer a new third row that wasn't as hardcore. This was something that a more casual family could own that didn't want the rough ruggedness of a Sequoia. And so if I know anything about Toyota, they always love to diversify their portfolios. They've been doing this since the 80s. Every day I discover more cars Toyota made in Japan that I had never heard of. And so they're starting to do that here in America, making a car for every type of person and for every situation. The Grand Highlander kind of slots in as a bigger unibus body SUV that's going to be friendly to drive every day. I had a Sequoia for a week as a press vehicle. I liked it a lot, but it was kind of rough and tumble. You had to use a miniature ladder to get up into it. The tow mirrors were the size of Oklahoma. And that was in the $80,000 range. This is a measly $47,000. Three grand cheaper by MSRP than the Lexus UX that I'm testing this week, which is uh, crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But how do I feel finally driving it? Does it live up to what I expected? And eh, quite frankly, it does. It's not anything exciting. I was purely excited to drive this out of my own merit and for my own sake because I went to the launch. If it weren't for that, I probably wouldn't have given this vehicle a second look. It's fine. It's, you know, whatever. But something that Toyota is very, very good at is just finding a recipe and using that recipe over and over and over again until they can't any longer. Well, they have now added just a little bit of spice to the Highlander recipe, and would you look at that? It's even a little bit better. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little walkthrough of the 2024 Grand Highlander. Thank you so much to Toyota of Naperville for allowing me to have this full circle moment. I've been working with Toyota Naperville for coming up on five years. Um, yeah, five years. They are absolutely awesome. I cannot thank them enough. Such great customer service. Everyone I talk to at Toyota Naperville is fantastic. And if you are looking for a newer used car, they should be your first stop every time. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.